Oh, great YouTubers, welcome back. In today's part of our conveyor project, we'll be adding motion sensors to our conveyor project. Okay, why do we need motion sensors? Basically, when you give command for the motor to run, the motor shaft turns all right. We also, in the previous tutorial, we monitored and made sure that the contactor that we've given the command to, to start is also, we have given the command to start as also energized. Okay, so whilst the motor is running, the conveyor will be turning. And to make sure that indeed the conveyor is turning and it's not only the motor turning, we need to also put measures in place to monitor the turning of the conveyors. And this is what we term as the motion sensors or speed sensors. Let's look at how they look like. Okay, so we can see right here that we have an example of a motion sensor. It's an inductive sensor which we apply 24 volts at one point of its cable and then we apply zero volts at the other end and then we have an output which comes on whenever the sensor is activated and this will be connected to the input of the plc okay so we can see this structure here so we have a, a metal case here that uh, is having holes in it so whenever it turns it keeps pulsing this uh, sensor and then we receive these pulses in the PLC to monitor and make sure that indeed the conveyor is turning. If the conveyor is no longer turning, we need to stop the belt and then prompt the operator that the conveyor has stopped on motion sensor or speed failure. Okay, so let's move right in and then implement this in our step seven program. But before then, let's have a look at uh, this video okay to see how this motion sensor work so I open our projects we, it's already open so that is our, our conveyor projects already open I have it right here okay so to do this uh, we implement it for the first the last belt which is belt 3 so we need to add another network a new network so control r and this is going to be a speed sensor <laughs> okay so how do we monitor this now the input is a pulsating signal coming in so the signal will be going on and off because uh, the sensor will be activated on activated off again so we are using an input to reach this signal coming in and then we give the address so let's say if the if this speed sensor is connected to our last input that we have in our project which is uh, i think 0 0.5 is uh, is available so we have i 0 0.5 let's see whether it's not in use 0 0.5 is already used so we can go to i 0 0.6 okay so 0 0.6 is not used so we can give it a symbolic name and this is going to be our speed sensor. So, sensor. so this is our speed sensor input coming in. And now remember, we need to always go off whenever this speed sensor pulses are no longer coming in. So we need an off delay timer. And this is going to be our timer 3, T3. T3 already used, so we go to T4. Okay, and then we can give it a symbolic name. And this is going to be our speed underscore sensor delay. So we have our speed sensor delay, and then the time interval. We say we monitor it for 30 seconds. And when we don't see it for three seconds, uh, we stop. So whenever we don't see the signal, we need to stop the conveyor. So we need to introduce this one into our conveyor system to stop it. So it has to, it can be in series with this section of our program. It's going to be an, the normally open contact of the of delay timer which is T4. Okay. 
so we have it introduced and remember because we will be starting the conveyor this is not supposed to be active when the conveyor is down so we need to be able to bypass the sensor when the conveyor is down and only monitor when the conveyor is running so i need to introduce a logic here to do that so a branch okay sorry supposed to be the normally close contacts of the conveyors output so it's going to be q4.2 okay so so far as the conveyor is not started we have the signal coming on and then this timer remains on okay so we can save and download okay so then we can then uh, simulate and make sure whether their logic is working correctly or not okay so we can analyze the circuit now we have the delay timer so so far as we have a uh, process coming from the from the speed sensor we should we are okay for the conveyor to run but whenever we lose the pulses from the speed sensor then we need to stop the conveyor so we have it introduced right here to stop the conveyor and whenever the conveyor is down we should be able to keep the sensor active because it's not needed when the conveyor is down so we have a bypass inputs here that is going to keep the timer active okay so i go online and we can see that indeed the timer is active here is prepared everything is prepared here to receive the start command so if i click on the stats and indeed uh, the conveyor started but we weren't getting any signal from the speed sensor so the conveyor has stopped again so i will start once again for us to see and immediately i'm able to bring the input signal the conveyor has stopped again because we did not receive any signal from the speed sensor now let me start again and this time i will have to bring the speed sensor signal on so on and then the speed sensor signal comes on and we can see that so far as this sensor keeps coming the timer keeps resetting and we will never stop the conveyor so far as we are getting the signal coming in okay so immediately the signal stops coming in the timer just comes down and then the conveyor stops so basically this is how you implement to have a, a motion sensor on your belt to monitor in real time so that when there is a, a brick in your belt you should be able to detect that there is a brick and then you stop the motor from running okay so basically we've been able to implement this for the bc3 i would like you to try your hands and implement it for bc2 and bc1 and leave comments below if you have issues in your implementation thank you very much see you in the next video bye bye